Uh, I would like to then show you here how some of the uh, recent research that we've been able to conduct. Um, when I tell you about that the system is uh, reproducible and uh, is able to provide um, uh, repeatability or a good repeatability measure is because we have conducted uh, some research in the past uh, where we <clears throat> call the repeatability and reproducibility of the TechScan uh, system in healthy children. So we, we saw 30 children, they came through twice a baseline and one month later, we conducted a, a free recordings uh, in, uh, in barefoot analysis with the shoes and with the shoes and uh, endorthosis. And basically we're able to provide uh, interclass correlations, which was really, really good. And uh, over 0.75 if you're keen to know. Um, and also we've done the same for the F scan. Uh, this was really helpful for us because we were we did this research just before we conducted our uh, multi-center randomized controlled trial single blinded between different pediatric hospital in uh, in Scotland, um, which then uh, gave us some um, exactly these details. Um, this has been uh, my my commitment, my passion for uh, more than three years where at the time I realized that out there, there was very weak evidence to support the role of uh, podiatrists within the pediatric rheumatology multidisciplinary team. So I felt a responsibility, or I sort of got an inspiration to commence my PhD and dedicate three years of my life uh, intensively to trying to find new ways, new evidence, so I can uh, share it with you and hopefully a podiatrist in America or whether it's in South in Africa or whether it's in Asia will be able to say to have a better quality evidence to support our role as podiatrists within in pediatric rheumatology. So in my particular case, we recruited 60 children where um, we saw them at baseline three months and six months. And I was really fortunate because we got a 99.4 uh, attrition rate or completion rate. Uh, so 179 appointments completed over 180, which was brilliant for, for me. The research aims uh, very quickly uh, investigated the effectiveness of uh, uh, preformed semi-rigid full orthosis uh, over a period of six months. So uh, very cost-effective devices that can be modified on the day, on the spot, chair side, and prescribed immediately on the same day as the um, the uh, of the initial consultation. This was reflecting the gold standard in pediatric rheumatology of early intervention. And then very briefly, uh, the results we obtained were uh, that um, we, had, well, this is just some statistics for you, uh, male and uh, was <clears throat> control and trials. We had the age was, uh, was 11 years old, more or less for both groups. Uh, and stable medications also was uh, reflected in both groups as well. Uh, these are the practical example for you to show you the type of functional devices that we utilize in the day. We used a, a 0.75 black EVA for blinding uh, the participant and also to acquire some of those um, uh, dynamic impression to see the compliance of the treatment. And uh, you can see how we applied a, a 5 degrees antiperonator wedge in the rear foot. And then we improved the plantar pressure distribution and shock absorption of, with a 2 millimeters poron throughout. This was a control insole, as you can see, the same top cover, but no rear foot corrections in this particular case. Um, then uh, uh, let me show you some of the images that we used, uh, we obtained using the, the F scan and SA. Uh, so you can see how the control insole that we applied uh, had no influence whatsoever on the participant gait, whereby, on contrary, with, on a trial insole, this is an image of without the insole and all the problems that you can easily identify and how our uh, off-the-shelf devices with modification and shock absorption material were able to significantly reduce the pressure and the peak pressure and the pressure, pressure time integrals, particularly on the forefoot. That, uh, you can imagine uh, in juvenile idiopathic arthritis, they have um, active arthritis and symptoms in the patient. So, um, and the secondary outcomes included that we were able to extrapolate the gait time, which was significantly different, as well as the gait velocity, um, then um, uh, the, the stance time. We also looked at the total plantar pressure and the heel, uh, the midfoot, and the fifth metatarsal head, the hallux, 
so all of these informations were uh, were extrapolated using that 10 uh, plant to pressure mapping that I showed you earlier, which was hard work, but well worth it at the end of the day, because we were able to, for the first time, investigate in much more details how those little kids are uh, walking walks now. So in conclusion, we had a reduction, a significant reduction of pain, uh, uh, improve on a kid's quality of life, and improvement of, uh, of different, um, of different uh, gait parameters as well. I've provided here some of the references for the, our papers that we, we um, uh, published in, uh, in uh, BMJ Archives of Disease in Childhood. And if you're interested, I will be more than happy to share with you the full papers. Just, uh, just ask and I'll, I'll um, text and we'll be able to send it over or I'll send it over myself. So this is for us. Uh, I would like to thank also Dr. Santos and Associate Professor Davinder Sain Cruel and the future Dr. Fellas, uh, my dear PhD student. They are now taking the lead uh, into ex uh, further exploring those interventions in children with GIA. And watch this space because we are in the process of building the biggest gait analysis database in pediatric rheumatology, thanks to using some of those modern technologies that can hopefully really help our kids.